Welcome to the Level Up Gaming Channel. I'm your host, Hootie, and today we're gonna be taking a look at how to record gameplay on PC and the best settings to do so. I know recording gameplay on a single PC setup was something that I struggled with for a very long time, so hopefully this helps you get started. Anyways, guys, let's get right to it. All right, guys, let's get it started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is head on over to obsproject.com. You're going to want to download the version corresponding to your operating system. This will work on Windows, Mac, and Linux, obviously. I downloaded the Windows version because I'm on Windows. Once you've got it downloaded, you can go ahead and install. Once it's done installing and you've got it running on your computer, it should open up and look like this. As you can see, a black screen in the middle. You should have one scene created by default. If you don't have a scene for some reason, go ahead and hit that little plus sign in the lower left-hand corner, give it a proper name, and then just hit OK. But the next step is going to be to add a source. So in this case, we're going to add a game capture source. You could always do a display capture source if you're just trying to capture a monitor or a window capture source if you're trying to capture like a browser or a certain window. But you want to make sure if you're recording game play you use a game capture source this is because it is optimized to record gameplay it's going to use less resources compared to a display capture or a window capture it's going to work better for recording full screen applications because that's what it's designed for so we're going to go ahead and create a game capture source you can name it whatever you want i'm going to leave it defaulted and hit okay now by default a game capture source captures any full screen application you can also set it to capture a specific window which is what i usually end up doing and then go ahead and select the window you want it to capture. So in this case, as you can see, I've got it capturing Modern Warfare, which is running in the background on my computer right now. Capture any full screen application. The default mode works 99% of the time, especially if you are running in full screen when you play games. But if you like to run in windowed mode or full screen windowed mode, you'll have to do capture specific window because it won't pick up non full screen applications. So once you've found the mode that works best for you, you don't have to change any of these other settings. Just go ahead and hit OK. So the next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and head on over to the settings button over here on the right hand side and then go down to the output tab. So under the output tab, you'll see it's set to simple. You'll see streaming and recording. What you're going to want to do is go to the drop down where it says simple and change it to advanced. Once it's changed to advanced, go ahead and go to the recording tab and you'll see that your type is set to standard or it should be and your recording path is set to the default. But what you're going to want to do is change your recording path to wherever it is you want to save your videos. I highly recommend an external hard drive of sorts or maybe some network storage unless you're just recording a one off video because videos do take up a lot of space guys. You're going to run out of hard drive space if you're recording videos all the time and you're not storing them elsewhere. I'm going to leave mine defaulted to my videos. Next we've got our recording format. Most people recommend and typically record in MP4 format because it's very easy to take MP4 formatted videos into whatever video editing software you're using and start editing it. But the problem with recording in MP4 is if your OBS crashes or something else happens, like your power goes out, you will lose this recording. If you've been recording for an hour in MP4 and your power goes out, you get it back and you start your computer up. You go to try and watch this MP4, you're not going to be able to. It's going to be corrupted. I highly recommend recording in FLV or MKV, something like that. And then using OBS's Remux tool to actually Remux your recordings into an MP4 when you need them in MP4 format. I'll show you later how to Remux recordings from MKV to MP4. Next up, we've got our audio tracks. So I've got one audio track selected here, guys. You probably don't need more than one. If you do need more than one, if for some reason you've got multiple audio tracks that you're trying to mix here in your recording, that's fine. Go ahead and select them. But for the most part, if you're just recording gameplay, you probably only have one audio track. So I wouldn't worry about this too much. Next is your encoder. So this one is going to decide where your computer is encoding your recording. Right now, I've got NVIDIA NVENC encoder selected. What this means is it's going to be doing the encoding on my graphics card. So it's going to be using the hardware. So Nvidia has a hardware encoder and so does AMD now. And they're really good. They produce high quality content. But the problem is if you don't have a high end graphics card, this could really bottleneck your gameplay and cause you to really get some huge performance issues. Now, if your CPU is actually the bottleneck and not your graphics card, say you have a 2080 Ti or something crazy, go ahead and use Nvidia NVENC. Your graphics card should be able to handle the game and encoding at the same time with no issue. 
That being said, if your CPU is fantastic and your graphics card is a little bit lacking, you're going to want to use the X264 encoder. You're still going to get great quality gameplay. You're just going to see that your CPU usage when you use X264 is a little bit higher than when you use the NVIDIA NVENC encoder because the X264 encoder is a software encoder and it is actually using your CPU to do the encoding. Next up, one of the most important settings is your rate control. You're going to want to set this to CBR and you're going to want to set your bit rate somewhere between 25,000 and 50,000 if you can. I usually stick to about 45,000, but you're going to want to play with this a little bit. You're going to want to, you know, set it really high and start doing a recording while playing a game and see how your computer handles it. If your computer can't handle 45 or 50,000 kilobits, then tone it down to 40 or 35 and keep going until you find that sweet spot for your computer. This will impact the quality of your video, but going down to 25 or 30,000 versus 45,000 isn't going to produce a terrible quality video. You're still going to produce an HD quality video. You might just get a couple more artifacts here and there, but for the most part, you won't be able to notice them. But if you were to go down to like 4,000 or 5,000, you're definitely going to see a loss in quality of your recording. So make sure you stay up there, stay around 20 to 25,000 at the low end if you can. Otherwise, you're going to definitely start to see some issues with your recording quality. Keep your keyframe interval at zero, guys. Preset quality is what I usually have. You can bump it up to max quality if your computer's a monster. Uh, if you find yourself trying to go down to performance or max performance, you might be looking at changing your bitrate instead, or maybe even your downscale filter. But we'll talk about the downscale filter here in a minute. I usually just leave my profile at high or main. I wouldn't mess with that too much. Your look ahead can be unchecked and your psychovisual tuning you want to have checked. Make sure you have your GPU set to zero and your max B frame set to two. And then we're going to head on down to the video tab. So here you're going to want to set your base canvas resolution to whatever your monitor resolution is. So in my case, I'm on a 1080p monitor. So I've got mine set to 1920 by 1080. If you're on a 1440 monitor, set it to 1440. If you're on a 4K monitor, set it to 4K. And then after that, you've got your output resolution. The output resolution is the resolution you want the recorded video to be output at. So if you're in 1080p, but you want to output 720p for Twitter, then go ahead and set it to 720p. As a side note, if you are outputting 720p for Twitter, make sure you set your FPS to 30 instead of 60. Then we've got our downscale filter. So this is important. If you're not downscaling at all, you might be able to get away using bilinear or bicubic downscaling without seeing any meaningful loss in video quality. But if you're recording in 1080p or 1440p or 4K and you're outputting a 1080p video and you're using bilinear or bicubic, you are going to see some blurriness, some artifacts potentially, you're going to want to use Lanxos. It is the best downscale filter available to you right now, and it's going to produce the highest quality video content. So make sure you guys have Lanxos selected. If you're seeing performance issues, if you're outputting 1080p, you're recording 1080p, and your computer still can't handle it, you've messed with your bit rate, you've done everything you could, you can try changing your downscale filter to bilinear or bicubic. That might save you that, that couple CPU percentage points that is going to stop your your computer from lagging out your game or whatever. But at this point, if you've gotten this far, I don't know that this one setting is going to save the day for you. It might be a combination of settings. But if you've got your bitrate set properly, you should be able to record with no issues, even on a machine that's a couple years old. So go ahead and mess with that bitrate a little bit more before you change your downscale filter. Then you're going to want to change your common FPS values. I think it defaults to 30. I don't remember, but mine is at 60. If you're recording videos for YouTube, you're definitely going to want to set it to 60. The higher you set this it's going to be a little bit harder on your machine but it shouldn't be too bad comparatively 30 versus 60. Then we're going to head on over to our audio tab and under our audio tab here you can see that I've got my sample rate set to 48 kilohertz. The default is 44.1 kilohertz. To test and see if your audio devices support 48 kilohertz you're going to want to go to your sound options, open sound settings, scroll down and go to sound control panel. Under the playback tab, right click your default playback device and go to properties and then advanced. If you've got 48,000 hertz selected already, then obviously your playback device supports 48,000 hertz. But if it's not selected, you can go ahead and try and select 48,000 hertz and see if your device supports it. If it does, it'll work fine once you hit apply. If it doesn't, then you'll know it doesn't. Next, go to your recording device and do the same thing. Again, if it's already selected, you obviously support it. If it's not, try and select it. If it doesn't work, then it doesn't support it. If it does, then you do support 48 kilohertz. Once you've decided if you do support 48 kilohertz or you don't, come back to the sample rate 
and change it or don't change it. You're gonna see a minor difference in audio quality here, but it's nothing groundbreaking. It's not gonna be life or death. It's not gonna change the overall quality of your video. If you're uploading YouTube videos at 44.1, 99% of people aren't gonna notice the difference and it's not going to decide whether or not your video gets a million likes or a million views or not. So don't worry about it too much. Next, we're going to want to set up our desktop audio so that we can actually hear our game. So you can select the default option here, but I highly recommend going in and manually selecting the default device that you have for outputting audio. So in this case, that's my speakers. Selecting the, the actual device itself manually is almost always going to be better than selecting default because I found that OBS will sometimes get confused or lose my default device and then it stops working. Whereas when I tell it exactly which device to look for and use, there's no issues. You're going to want to do the same thing for your mic if you want to record your microphone. So go in and select whichever your microphone is. Mine is the line in device. And then you can leave the rest of these settings uh, to their default and you don't have to worry about it. From here, you can go to the advanced tab. This is optional. I leave my color format on MV12, my color space on 601, and I change my color range to full usually. This is a personal preference option. I would mess around with it a little bit and see which one you like better, full or partial, but it's not gonna be game breaking either way. From here, you can go ahead and hit apply and hit okay. And as you can see, my new audio tracks show up here. We've got my mic audio and my desktop audio, which will be from the gameplay. So now we've got our game capturing, we've got our audio capturing. So we're gonna go ahead and hit start recording. Now it's recording our gameplay. I can go ahead and go into the multiplayer menu. I can change my loadouts, I can do whatever. And I know that it's going to be recording my audio and capturing my microphone as well as capturing the screen. So now I can stop my recording and we can go ahead and talk about how to get your MKV recording files into MP4 files. So if I go into my videos tab here, this is my latest recording right here. You can see that it's an MKV file, 244 megabits, and it's 45 seconds long. But I can't use MKV in DaVinci Resolve. I need an MP4 file. So I can come up here to file, Remux recordings. Click this ellipse button here in the middle and navigate to your latest recording. There it is. Now you can see it's automatically targeted a new file with the same name, but it's an MP4 recording. You're not gonna lose quality in your video by doing this, guys. There's gonna be no issues. It's just going to change the file type from an MKV to an MP4, and it doesn't remove the MKV file. You still have that. So go ahead and hit Remux. That was quick. It's done. It takes a little bit longer if you have a really, really long recording, but it's still not too bad. Now, if I come into my videos tab again, you can see it's outputted a new MP4 file. This is my recording. So if I go ahead and click on this, skip ahead a little bit, whatever. And I know that it's going to be recording my audio and capturing my microphone as well as capturing the screen. And as you guys can see, it is recording my gameplay. It's recording my audio. You could hear me clicking on the menu items in the actual game. Everything's working great. If you need to mess with your audio, you can adjust your audio volumes. If the game's too loud or your mic's too loud, or maybe you need your game, your mic to overpower the game. If you're doing voiceovers, whatever it may be, you can adjust all of that stuff here on the fly. Lastly, if you guys wanted to add maybe a webcam capture or something like that, as long as your webcam's plugged into the computer you're trying to record on, you can go ahead and add a video capture device. It's pretty straightforward. You click add video capture device, you select your webcam and you're done. And that's it guys. That's how you record videos using OBS on your PC. You should be able to do this on fairly weak computers in today's standards. If your computer's four or five years old, it can probably handle it. You just need to make sure you nail down the settings in a way that works best for your computer. If this video helps you and you guys get some videos uploaded to YouTube, go ahead and send me a link down in the comments below. I'd love to go check it out and let me know if you have any issues or if there's any way I can help you if you get stuck. Anyways, gamers, thanks for checking out the video. I really hope this one helped you level up. Don't forget to head on over to my channel and check out some of my other videos or leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. I'll see you guys later. Bye.